Hello everyone, welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finals 1. This is section 5.2 on the first passage of time. So here we're going to give a definition of what we're talking about when we say first passage of time. And this is actually denoted to m here. So consider the symmetric random work that we defined previously. And then imagine you pick a number in your head on the integer, and let's call this integer m. And let tau m denote the first time that the random work reaches that level m. That is, tau m is actually nothing but the minimum time n, time n such that the random variable is actually equal to this, uh, uh, this level m. And this is a mathematical uh, definition. But in plain English and intuitively, what it means is very simple. So let's say we have something like this, and this is time, and this is the value of our random walk, right? So, and then we pick a random, a random number m inside our head. Let's say, like for example, we pick m here, right? So this is a, this is the level of our random uh, number that we pick. Then what the random random walk will do is just do what a random walk does. It's gonna go randomly go up sometimes, go down, but then for when it reaches that level M for the very first time, then that's what we take and we call basically, so let me do this better, time, and we, go, and we call basically the first time that the, the, the random walk hit the level M, All right, so the very first time that it hit level M, that's the first passage of time. So we just look at the time here. So take the random walk, observe it over time, as soon as it's level m, then note that time to m, and that's your first passage of time. So if the random walk goes back and then come back and hit the level m again, so this is not the first passage of time, maybe the second passage of time if you can say. But that's essentially all that means. So to m is the minimum of time. Um, so that the random walk is the very first time the random walk hits level m. I don't know really how to say that any uh, easier. It's very simple. So now this this random variable, this to m is a random variable, right? So if you're lucky, you can hit this level m very quickly. If you're unlucky, you might hit it maybe a year later, very long, very very far in the future. So this is a random variable. And as any other random variable, then we know it has uh, a mean, a variance, a distribution, and everything that makes random variable random variable. And here we're going to study essentially three properties that I found very interesting on this. So the first property is essentially we're going to show that the probability that store m is less than infinity is equal to one, right? Is is equal to one. So what what we mean by that is soon or later, the random if you pick any number m in your head soon or later you guarantee that the random walk is going to hit that level m soon or later it's going to hit it that's essentially what this is trying to say and from there then we show a second thing so this is random variable so what is the expected value then we show that the expected value of this to m is actually plus infinity so even if we know that soon or later we will hit this level m but when you try to calculate the expectation you're going to find that this is actually plus infinity you know we'll show this and finally, this is another property that's interesting. It shows you the probability of hitting level 1 uh, at a given time. Um, and what this means is, let me uh, have a graph here really quickly again. So this is our random walk. And let's say this is our time t. So time has many different uh, values. One. This is time t2, t3, etc. So, what this last thing is showing us is the probability of hitting level m, uh, level one. So let's say I pick the level is one here. So, what is the, the probability that random variable, uh, the random, uh, the random work hit level one first at time t equal one? What is the probability that it hits the random variable at time t equal two? Uh, Hit, hit level 1 at time t equal 3, etc. Well, this probability is given by essentially this guy. So let's let's say for example uh, j is equal to 1. So 2j 
2, 2j minus 1 is nothing but 1, right? So this is the probability that the first time it reaches level 1 is equal to t equal to 1. What is this probability, right? So this is like the number will come directly and fit this on at time t. Well, this probability is given essentially by just a function of j and and uh, a function of like the probability of going up is the probability of going down. And we'll see this more in detail. And this is actually very useful and interesting because with this three property, we can essentially show how um, we can value a, a, perpetual, a, a perpetual American thought that we are able to see there, which is interesting to relative security. And we can actually also show some optimal strategy that can be used to really maximize the value of uh, this derivative security and which is quite exotic right because it's uh let me say it's a perpetual uh but okay so let's go now and continue and try to do this so essentially our goal is this let's, let's recap what we, what we know already because in this chapter it's very important to be really able to recap everything we're doing Otherwise, it gets quickly very confusing and quickly very uh, look complicated, but it doesn't have to be complicated. So we have seen this. This is what we want to show. That the tumor data, uh, the random work will, will hit the level M. Then we have our definition of time, right? So it's the minimum of time N such that the random, warrior by, the random work at time N is equal to the level M that we picked. And remember, the level M that we picked we want it to be an integer. So level M is going to be 1, 2, 3, a natural number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 36, or whatever. Okay, so let's start with lemma 2.1, 5.2.1, 5, 5 which is going to uh, help us in this uh, uh, this proof. So let's uh, MN be a symmetric random walk, and we fix a, a, sig a number sigma, any sigma that we're picking in our mind, and then the process which is defined by this guy here is actually a martingale. So this seems to be a very random thing that has been picked here, but we're going to see how this really help us uh, prove the properties that we're interested in. So how do we show that this is a martingale? So if you remember well, uh, basically uh, a martingale is just saying like this, look, if I have, a, let's say for, for example, I have a stock price today, my best guess of the value of the stock price tomorrow is nothing but the, the current value, right? So if we can show this relationship about SN, then we can, we've shown that SN is a martingale. So how can we show this? So well, SN plus 1 is nothing but, uh, you can just use this definition here to truly write SN plus 1. There is nothing mysterious here. Everything, everywhere we see M here, we just add N plus 1, okay? And then, um, if you remember mn plus 1, mn plus 1, this is basically a symmetric random walk, right? So it's just a sum, a summation of uh, this x and this x uh, that we, we have defined in the previous uh, video, which is 1 plus 1 if it's a uh, tail, uh, plus 1 if it's head, minus 1 if it's tail. And this is just the running sum going to uh, uh, up to type n. So we can really separate them. There is nothing mysterious here again. So then we can multiply basically this part with this guy and this part here with this guy, right? And we have the two separated, nothing extraordinary here. Then we can now take the expected values of these two. Then we can go ahead and take the expected value, right, of, of both sides. So expected value of this is just the expected value of that. Nothing too mysterious here. And then if you notice like this is expectation at time n, but then at time n, everything that's here is already known. Mn is not random at time n, right? The random walk at time n is not random. We know exactly what the value is. We don't know what it's going to be in the future, but today we know uh, at time n, we know exactly what, it, what the value is. So we can do what is called taking out what is known. And that's exactly what we do here. And this part is still uh, on now xn plus 1 because we need to flip the, the, uh, the coin again to see what this value is going to be. So we can have the expectation of that. And this again is known, it's a, it's a constant, so we can take it out. And if you pay attention, you will see that this guy here, this thing here, strangely looks like sn, right? Actually, it is exactly sn. 
so we can do the replacement here um, all right and then you see this guy 2 sigma e plus e to the minus sigma to the power n and and this thing here so we can take them together oh, actually you no know, this guy here is just these two entered and came to, into sr so let me let me qualify that so these two are into sn so that's fine this guy here is just this thing that's fine so now the expected value of a random variable here is just uh, basically this is a symmetric random walk so there's with probability there's one over two probability of getting uh, that x j plus one x n plus one is equal to one and there's one over two chances of x n plus one is equal to minus one right so all we need to do is replace that here right so one over two times e to the power sigma one plus one over two e to the power sigma minus one and this is exactly what we have here that's exactly what we have in this guy here so this is nothing but the expectation of this thing here again okay so then we can see that we can uh, assign this this thing here is just the same thing as this and these two obviously cancel out if you pay attention and then you have sn so it's, so we have shown the property that we needed okay